Vanessa. Hey, Craig. I'm worried so you don't have to. There's some people that just keep making appearances here in nostalgia set. People like Shaquille O'Neal, Pee Wee Herman, Abe Pagoda, and of course the oft famed deep sandwich himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger. What? Arnold. Anyway, he's so goofy and so funny. Uh, Arnold. Oh, man. Arnold. You can't stop watching him no matter how hard you try. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. that can make the Arnold formula seem old and stale, apart from all his other ones, it's last action here. You'd think the director of Die Hard and Predator would know something about keeping audiences entertained, but in John McTiernan's big budget board fest, we find that even the most action packed director can make the most dull, unfunny, and creatively misled of pictures. Now, I know what you're thinking. Arnold Schwarzenegger make a bad movie? Surely you checked. Well, let's take a look and see why Last Action Hero is a Last Action Zero. Trust me, it's a lot funnier than most of the jokes in this movie. <laughs> so we open up with the movie slamming us in the face, literally. <laughs> oh, oh. Violent cinema? We see a bunch of cops lined up around a building where some psycho is holding a bunch of children hostage. Who could possibly save the day? Put that cookie down! <laughs> Put the cookie down. Put that cookie down. Damn. You're gonna sit and wait for the real hostage negotiator. Last time you pulled this, John did a good fuck go that dick out of shit. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna try it. He then walks across a pointless Tina Turner cameo. Thanks, Tina. Your checks in the mail. As he faces one cop who doesn't want to let him pass. Hey, you want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. Oh! Yeah. What? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. What does that mean? But... <laughs> I mean, those lines are corny, but they usually make sense. Is it because acre sounds like aches? Is it because he kicked them so far as like the distance of an acre? Are his balls the acres? I mean, <laughs> what's the joke? Arnold, you can't just say random phrases and expect them to magically be funny. You gotta think about them. It's like saying you want to be an astronaut. Tricks are for kids. <laughs> so he gets to the rooftop where we see the psycho holding the kids hostage. Gave my word of honor you can watch you die. Oh, Stephen Wright, what did you do to yourself? <laughs> Living on a one-way dead end street. And of course, it just so happens that one of the boys being held hostage is Slater's son. Now who's the gun? All right, I'm on off. Let the boy go. Let the boy go. You know, he has a name. <laughs> father, I thought you might yeah. have information. But it turns out the movie is, well, just that. A movie. Focus! Nick! Being watched by a whiny little protagonist named Danny. Danny is friends with a projectionist at a movie theater played by Robert Prosky. The new Jack Slater opened this weekend at the Arch. So being such a good friend, Prosky offers him an advanced screening of the next Jack Slater movie. As long as he finally starts going back to school, which he's been skipping out on quite often. There they show films of a lesser caliber, like Hamlet with Lawrence Olivier, the hack. So he goes to heaven. Don't just do it! God! Shakespeare's like the worst writer ever! <laughs> wow. So Danny starts daydreaming about what the film would be like if Arnold was in it. Stay thy hand, fair fate. Who said I'm fair? Enjoy it while you can, Arnold. That's as close to Hamlet as you're ever going to get. To be or not to be. Not to be. Vanity, thy name is insert clever pun here. <laughs> so he goes home and gets yelled at by his mom right before she has to head out to work. He sits around, watches some TV, does boring stuff, and then finally gets ready to go see the movie. So he gets ready to head out the door when Oh. Oh. You alone? Okay. Hello, sudden dark turn. Do it. Do it. Go ahead. Do it. This is pretty fucked up right here. So he handcuffs him in the bathroom and continues to roam the place. You got junk! No jewelry, no VCR. Maybe I should try robbing rich people. <laughs> Go bitch, you big dog. So, after that pointlessly disturbing detour, Danny mm -hmm. heads to the movie theater where Krasky is waiting. Is the print on your wall? Oh, yes, no, I'm 
<laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, kids, strangers may offer you all sorts of things to get you to come with them, like movies, magical tickets, and a lot of other horseshit. But chances are they're just trying to touch your bathing suit area. And that's Ooh. no good. So if a stranger, especially Robert Prosty, tries to touch <laughs> your chili dog, just get out of there. So he grips the ticket, which I guess was made out of Tinkerbell blood, as he starts showing the movie for Danny to watch. <laughs> You see a guy being interrogated by a mob boss played often enough by Anthony Quinn. You want me to make them operate on you? I would make an Anthony Quinn joke, but none of you would get it. <laughs> we then cut to Jack Slater, entering his home as he sees his old friend conveniently right before he dies. Tony Bilbaldi and the Torelli mob are joining forces. Frank. Frank. How the hell even killed it? Wasn't Arnold D. Trauma really that bad? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, what what happened? Wow. Cartoon cat. I'm getting a flea bath later. 
Do I mean? Well, the idea could be kind of clever. It still makes no sense. Why are all these mismatched cops in this buddy movie? I mean, you don't see Mel Gibson and Danny Glover teaming up with Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. Yet. But the point still remains. Buddy movies just deal with one pair of buddies, not five or six. No other movies work that way. No one likes a smart ass. So Slater gets called in to be yelled at by the chief as the kid keeps pointing out all the cliches pretty much before the audience can. I'm willing to bet that everyone has a 555 number. There are no unattractive women here. I was just in a real police station. And this is much nicer. Kid, leave the plot holes to me, okay? Here's my job. So he goes into a blockbuster video store trying to prove that there's an actor called Arnold oh, Schwarzenegger and that he's made dozens of hit films. What he finds, I have to admit, is kind of funny. No, it isn't oh, possible. Yeah, you know, I'll be back and we'll have some movies to pay the fire, you know, and uh, I just want to go the distance. Yeah. I mean, where are the ordinary, everyday oh, women? Yes. They don't exist because this is a movie. No, this is California. And one day I will dominate. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> so we get some scenes of them talking. Some more scenes of them talking, and then some more scenes of them talking. <sighs> you know, guys, speaking isn't exactly Schwarzenegger's strong point. Can't you give him a gun or a bomb or even a free suit? I don't care. Just give him something. Finally, they're going to visit the bad guy and his deadly assassin. Make no mistake, they are exceptionally well trained. <laughs> <laughs> what? Movie, are you on drugs? <laughs> so yeah, they don't really get any answers, and they just decide. Just like out. Oh, what I say about H two O season three. Movie, I really thought you were gonna fuck up there and do something exciting. I just started thinking maybe H two O, the producers of H two O, were on drugs when they thought the ending of H two O season three. Fight back. The grown up daughter have a bike right now. Kid, what the hell is wrong with you? You're on a girl's bike, they're in a fucking car. Do the math. This is gonna work. So that we can look good night. This has got to work. Oh shit. I'm a comedy psychic. And rather than another one that we'd like to see get polarized. Wow. Oh, boy. So the kid, still thinking the whole movie bit is funny, tries to prove to Slater again that this is all a film. Say this. Go on. Just say this one word. You can't. You can't possibly say. Because this movie is PG-13. You better not online, fuck shit, titty cock. So we go back to the police <laughs> wow. station where, once again, we get a screaming fast from the angry chief. 
The man is basically with the crimson chin. I'm sorry. And his very loud parents.
pretty cool plan. Holy smokes, I can't wait to see the possibilities that come out of it. Of course, just ruined the only cool premise in the entire film. Fucking cock blocker. You think you're funny, don't you? So Arnold gets the gun and shoots the bad guy who somehow explodes. Again, real world, isn't it fascinating? As the ticket falls, it actually releases the Grim Reaper from the Seventh Seal. Because, yeah, everyone who sees Last Action Hero is gonna know what the hell the Seventh Seal is. As Danny tries to take an injured Slater and get him back into the movie. Why? Because in the film world, his injury would only be considered a flesh wound, and apparently not kill him. So Death, played oddly enough by Ian McKellen, is Danny some <laughs> Wait, Professor X? Wait, no, not Professor X. Magneto. He's by Magneto. One ticket to rule them all. One ticket to fight. Oh, Ma so Magneto. The, the, the actor of Magneto plays in death in this. Reunites with the Prosky character, and they all live happily ever after. There is just one tiny detail that they overlooked. The fucking Grim Reaper is on the loose. I mean, we never saw him go back into the movie. Yet we even saw him kill a few people in the real world. Isn't this, I don't know, a big fucking deal? <laughs> Maybe it was meant to be saved for the sequel, Last Action Hero 2, Death Takes a Holiday. But luckily we never saw it, because this film tanked at the box office. And why should it? It's dull. I mean, it is so boring. Granted, some of the ideas have promise, and there are one or two jokes that work, but mostly it's a very clumsy... And why is that guy? I don't think he has a cost... A rip-off version of Sasuke showing them. Put that, put that, put that, put that cookie, put that, put that cookie. 